struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark, and she saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken away the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. My dear friends, today we celebrate something that is unbelievable. Even though we've heard this message time and time again throughout our lives, today I invite you to rediscover the glory with amazement of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. I ask you today as we enter into this beautiful celebration not just to be a witness not just a witness of the resurrection. I invite you not just to believe in the resurrection, which is a lot already. I invite you as the people of God to become, to be the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. You are called to be the resurrection by the fact that the Holy Spirit lives within us and vivifies us. We are called to live Jesus Christ and to radiate the light of Christ by everything we say and do. We don't just believe in the resurrection. We are the resurrection of Jesus in the world today. And how desperately this world needs the message of the resurrection of a believing people. 
There are so many, many people who walk in confusion and darkness. They may have heard of the story of Jesus, but unfortunately, too many of them have never seen a credible witness of the story of Jesus. And that's what we're called to be in this world. I want us to acknowledge today the reality of the situation in which we find ourselves. We really live in a post-Christian society. Christianity is no longer the dominant theme, the dominant message of the culture in which we live. In fact, we may even say that it is an anti-Christian message, which is the dominant culture. Christianity is mocked and sometimes seen as ridiculous. We don't live in a truly Christian society anymore. I don't know if you remember, but in 2008, the then President Barack Obama said publicly in an address, the United States is no longer a Christian nation. At the time, I was appalled and I was irritated by his statement. I thought it was a sign of defeat and I thought it did not really give reverence to the millions of Christians who have lived and brought Christianity to this nation from its very conception. I don't know if his statement was analytical, if it was a prophecy, or if perhaps it actually helped usher in a new reality in which Christianity is not the predominant cultural force in our society. But I will say that 16 years later today, his words are more true than ever before. We don't live really in a Christian culture. And therefore, we are called to live more radically our faith in this world. Now, I'm not saying there are not many dedicated Christians. There are. There are many, many, many dedicated, wonderful, faith-filled Christians. But there are also many people who have wandered from the faith in Christ. There are many people who claim to be Christian, but they're Christian in name only. Really, if you examine their lives, you would have zero evidence zero evidence to prove that they actually believed in the resurrection and lived the resurrection. They're just sort of a veneer of Christianity. I mean, although there are many Christian churches around our country, those are somewhat past glory days. Just go downtown Michigan City right here. Start counting the number of steeples. There's a lot of churches down there. But most of these churches, it's sad to say, are only a shell of what they once were. These are congregations that at one point had hundreds of members and now are reduced to a couple dozen. And not only that, there are so many Christian churches who have actually perverted the gospel of Jesus. They no longer proclaim the morality the radical nature of what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. They present a fake gospel based on a misconception of inclusion and diversity, which robs the cross of its actual power. It empties Christianity of its morality, and many of these Christian churches have arrived at the point that they don't even teach a Christian morality. They teach a form of relativism where everything is okay as long as in your heart you believe that what you're doing is right. This is simply the world we live in. Many Christian communities have lost, many Christian people have lost the reality of their faith. I know even in my own family, a little example of this, and I'm sure all of us could give some examples. I remember a few years ago, I was having a conversation with my great niece. She was about 10 years old. And I tell you, this is the truth. This is sad, but true. She could not differentiate the difference between Groundhog Day and the resurrection. Really. She knew that both of them somehow were this vague notion of, you know, someone was someone or something came out of the ground and there was a shadow or a light involved, but 10 years old. You think that a 10-year-old would know that? 
that's a lot of schooling, a lot of living in this culture. But the predominant culture does not teach even the basic message of Christianity as it did 50 or 60 years ago. Now, it's Easter morning. I don't want to be, I don't want to be negative and depressing on this beautiful day of celebration, but I do want us to set the stage. This is the reality in which we live. We live in a post-Christian culture. And I, for one, thank God. I thank God, and here's why. Thank you, Jesus, that you trust me enough to live in this age when Christianity is attacked and difficult. Think about that. God chose you. He chose each of you to live in this time when Christianity is attacked, when it is maligned, and it is set aside as unimportant. Why did God choose you? He knew that these days would be crazy, and nevertheless, he said, but I will raise up in my church men and women who believe they will be a contradiction to the society in which they live, and they will not only believe the resurrection, but they will live the resurrection of Jesus in this world. That's what we're called to do. Let us thank God that he chose us. He chose us for this time because he trusts us. We also, my dear friends, we never want to give up hope, no matter how difficult the road is. Because Jesus Christ has conquered by his resurrection. In the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus proves that everything he said while on earth is true. I am the bread of life. I will give you the Holy Spirit. Your sins will be forgiven. You will live forever. And on and on, all of these messages that Jesus gave, which are unbelievable, we know they are true because he proves it. Because he says, I will show you the power I have when you see me rise from the dead. This changes everything. A dead man is now alive by his own power because he is the God man. Jesus rose from the dead. My question is for you today. Do you really believe that Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth, died, and rose? Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead? Do you believe that he has the power, therefore, over sin and death and the enemy of humanity who is Satan himself? Because this message, Christ risen from the dead, is not a fable. It's not just some kind of fairy tale from 2,000 years ago in order to control the people. This is not the opiate of the people. This is the truth ordained before all time. Christ is risen, and therefore in him we are also risen. If we believe and live the gospel as he presents it to us. You see, my dear friends, our Christian faith cannot just be a thin veneer. It has to go all the way in. The grains of the wood have to go all the way through to the other side. When I was in my former parish, we had cabinets in the sacristy, and they were all uh, wood veneer, and they had been there for 70 years, and after time, it was sort of a poor parish, and all the veneer had pulled off, and they looked terrible. I went and visited the priest over there who's the current pastor, and I went to the sacristy, and all the veneers were replaced. And the cabinets looked beautiful. They really did. These veneers on the cabinet look beautiful. But those veneers are only a millimeter thick. They don't penetrate into the pressed wood that lies behind them. We can't be like that. Our Christianity can't be just a veneer. The grains of, those, of that wood has to penetrate. The message of the gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ, has to penetrate all the way into our hearts 
so that it changes us completely, so that we don't just witness the resurrection, we don't just believe the resurrection, we become the resurrection. That's what St. Paul tells us in sacred scripture, that we die in baptism and we are raised as a new man, a new woman in him. We are dead and come back to life as a new creation. We are changed completely. We aren't just covered in such a way that all of our vileness is hidden. From the inside, we are renewed by the living spirit that dwells within us. And therefore, my dear friends, we are not discouraged, but whether we are filled with hope. We acknowledge that we live in a culture that is contrary to Christianity. But we know, take to heart, listen to this very carefully, my friends. If you haven't listened to anything so far, we will win. We have already won because Christ is already risen from the dead and we live in him through baptism, through the repentance of our sins, so that the victory for us is absolutely assured. No questions. My dear friends, Jesus is alive. He has conquered the grave. He has conquered sin. He has conquered Satan. And in him, we rise also. And so let us give thanks today on this beautiful morning as we celebrate the victory of our Lord, which is also the victory of each one of us. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia.